Hi everyone, welcome to the stream. Just as usual, get out that I'm streaming and putting it on, putting it on the Discord. I'm wondering if if I want to jam some incinerator today. How oh, how's the modern matter right now? Take a look at it. Shadow ad nauseum. Bonza, Titan, Red, Red, Titan, Naya. This is the Naya, this Naya, the Naya pile. A lot of ad nauseum, actually. Huh. So do I want to play Incinerator today? I think I might want to play Incinerator. But I'm also tempted to play... Okay, you know what, I think I have enough play points to go experimental today. Wait, no, I, I really don't. Well, I'm really low in play points, but still. Um, I might go... I'm seeing a lot of non-blue decks. Yeah, I think... I think I want to play Luris today. Uh, sorry, Incinerator. I think I want to play Incinerator, but do I want to play the green? Do I want to play the green? Just for destructive revelry. Let's let's just go let's just jam this list. Should be fine. Everything's in order. Alright, let's do this. Incinerator burn. Playing the incinerator burn list. Let's change what I'm playing. Um, just gonna swap the deck that I'm playing, which is red white incinerator burn. Okay, this is the list set as my deck. Okay, everything should be up and running. Right, that's decent. Um, I'm gonna ship away the canopy because I do have idle on, and I think that 
I'd rather be fetching than... And let's start with that fetch. Just because this might bait them into thinking we're playing prowess. Which could be relevant. They could be make, make a suboptimal play to remove the Swift Spear. I think that right now it, we're up against Tron. Okay, no map. No map is good for us, means this Eidolon might still get in for something. Because it's strong, it's irrelevant when I do this. Though you should wait both on the land drop and on the Eidolon, but kind of want to have six. A land would be great next turn. We could deal 7, 10, 12. And 12 is a lot of damage. Not sure if it's me that broke down, if it's my opponent. Okay, that's my opponent. My opponent might be... So this is a... Someone's crying, that's fine. We do need a land now, though. Because if, if we do hit a land... Swift Spear... Ah, oh, that's an awful... That's an awful one. Because my, if my opponent plays any creature, this is bad. So I think I'd rather get in with Boros Charm here for 8. Yeah, I get in for 8 here. It's still not enough now, is it? As I get for 8, it goes down to 8, so even with the land this isn't lethal. Oh, I'm not in a good spot here, but I think I want to play Boris Charm. It's a little bit too late to be playing that Swift Spear. My opponent's gonna be casting something big next turn. Hopefully it's just a... Okay, a Karn is fine. A Thrak Tusk is awful. A Worm Coil is the worst. Okay, Karn. Karn is fine. He should hit a land. Yeah, yeah. Should hit a land. Now... Is it land or bust for us? Ooh. Seal of Fire. Do we like that? Okay, I think it's safe to say that this means no... Um, this means no Worm Coil. Oh, but Ulamog's also a very good one. I'm getting in for... Okay, I think I think my play is simple. I think I play Seal of Fire. I attack for four. And then my opponent needs to exile my land. Which he can. Which he can. Okay, so... Or is my play just Seal of Fire? Attack, Car attack Karn down to... If I attack Karn down to 2 or to 1, 
he can't down take on my land. My opponent goes to six like that. But then a worm coil still kills me. Even if he has to top deck it, it still kills me. Whereas oh, I hate this play. I think it's the safest play, right? Play Seal of Fire, attack him down to four, and then he can exile a land. If he plays Ugin and exiles my land, I'm kind of screwed. I think I'm setting up lethal off of a land here. If he does manage to deal with everything I have, well, I think I like that. I think I like that. Playing around Ugin the most. Okay, so he is exiling my land. Now he needs to play something here. Relevant. Okay, it's Ugin. It is Ugin. Okay, so. Oh no, wait. Oh, that sucks. I forgot that. Oh, I forgot that Ugin exiles everything, so I can't use this Seal of Fire to proc my Skewer. Oh, what a big punt. What a big punt. Ah, yeah, I punted there, uh, so kind of deserve this loss. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be beating that worm coil. I think. Hmm. Okay, I think our side is pretty straightforward. Um, I think that on the play, I don't want path. Okay, uh, my plan's a little bit different with this version of the deck. I need to slide in path, because Eidolon is so bad. Eidolon is actively worse than path. I'm taking these. This is good. Hello. How's it going? Uh, not great for me. We lost game one against Tron. Uh, I'm not sure if I had any outs though. Because I kind of misplayed. I played a Seal of Fire into what I assumed was an Ugin. And I forgot that Ugin's minus X exiles permanents, not creatures. Because I usually only play, play creatures, so... Kind of forgot about that one. I'm going to fetch for a white source here, just to avoid problems in the future. Okay, so we're, we know he has Worm Coil. It's good to know. Chromatic Star is fine. Ooh, another creature? That's very good. 
It's actually very good. Uh, revealing Ballista is a bit troublesome. Just because you can play Ballista for one and block some damage. Doesn't play Ballista, I think we win here. Stirrings. Yeah, I don't think there's anything you can do here. Okay, so... Am I bad or... Are, okay, with this land we're definitely winning. This land we're definitely... with this land, so win for sure. We're winning with either way because uh, we're dealing 7 here, so double bolt would have done it. So we were fine. As soon as he tapped out, we were fine. I still like this configuration to be honest. I don't think I want a third path, just because I'm fine if I find one, but I kind of don't want to find... I don't want to find it that actively. Uh, do I gotta keep this? I have some, like I have a creature, I have Snash, I have Skullcrack, and I have Bolts. But it is a one lander. I think I'll. I'll risk it. I think it's a, a calculated risk. It's all mono red, so not having a white source is fine. Map here is awful. Okay, so we're we're racing. It's not an excellent draw. Damn it! I'm gonna get punished here for sure. I think it was quote unquote the correct play. Yes, Tron. Come on, land. Ooh. Clutch it in the end. Um. Do I want to spike now? Yeah, probably. I'm not sure if I'll have time to... to spend... Like this point of damage is relevant, I think. Yeah, you're gonna search. You're obviously gonna search. Okay. Uh Worm Coil is actually fine. Ugin is bad. No, sorry, Karn is bad. Karn is very bad for us. Okay, Worm Coil is fine. Worm Coil is fine. Now, Karn is bad. It's a Thrak Tusk. It's either a Thrak Tusk or nothing. Okay, it's nothing. I mean, Stirrings is not nothing. Stirrings is digging for something. But it's better than him simply having it. Mine is not great for us. 
can still be a Thrag Tusk. We have the Thrag Tusk tech here. But that also means... Oh, we seriously need a land here. We seriously need... Is this Bolt Enthusiast, Goblin Tamer, Idol Unknown, Lava Spiker, Poseidon Randy? Yeah, it is. You know it. Ugh. Karn is so bad. He's gonna exile one of my lands. Yeah. So what do I want to do here? Do I want to smash the smithereens this? Land. Ooh, what a clutch. What a clutch. I want to just double suspend Wraith Bolt here. <laughs> okay, let's, let's think about this. I'm putting it as a Chromatic Star. If I double suspend Rift Bolt, it's like just suspending one for two mana because this is gonna gain some life. But then I can go like face board and then use skewers for face. And swing for a lot. But is it lethal? Uh, okay, my options are, I hold up Skullcrack, puts him down to 5, but then next turn, I'm only dealing 4. So that's not lethal. And this is assuming my opponent doesn't play anything. However, Assuming that my opponent doesn't have Thrak Tusk, because I think he would have played it last turn with this yes, Chromatic Star, so he can play Thrak Tusk, and I didn't have mana for Skullcrack. So assuming he doesn't draw Thrak Tusk this turn, I think that double suspending Rift Bolt is better. Which is exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, now I need to see what my opponent does here. If he down takes Karn on a land, so he's attacking with a lifelinker, of course. Goes up to 11. Oh, did he draw Thrag Tusk? Oh, it did. Oh no, it's Little Karn. Oh no, is it Trinisphere? Yeah, we just lost. We just lost. This is worse than, than Teferi. Worse than Teferi. Okay, now I don't have mana to pay for it. The the Rift Bolts. Yeah, I, I just lose here. I just lose. Curving Karns is very strong because this one steals lands and this one locks me out of the game. Like, yeah. 
I had no way out. Like this token was gonna gain them too much life. So pretty rough situation. Game one. I think that lose uh, that match. I think that losing game one was our problem. We really can't afford to lose game one against Tron. Because it's like, it's similar to playing against Uro decks, where the game that you're on the draw, you have a big disadvantage, so you can't just, so you can't just win, basically. Okay, we start by losing, which is a bit disheartening. Uh, sure, I like this hand. Casts Eidolon on two, or a top deck Incinerator on two, which I like. Which I like a lot. Uh, Verdant Catacombs, that could be anything. That's actually not a bad one. Because I'm imagining I get pushed here. I think that I'm always playing idle on here, but having a second one means uh, this fatal push isn't going to be so awful. Yeah. No, Tarmogoyf would be the best. Okay, that's cool. Now this push is going to feel a bit bad. Um, yeah, I think I, I think I still play idle on here. Which kind of sucks against the Liliana, but you need to fetch first, buddy. Okay, him fetching a basic is actually nice. My hand kills him. But I don't have mana to cast it all. Okay, big brain time. I didn't play the land because I want to discard the land. Uh, this is fine. Okay, so I think we win. Taking full credit for that play. In case he has mana tithe. I don't know. Taking full credit for that one. Not playing the land to play around Liliana. Uh, yeah. This feels really bad, but I really don't like Incinerator in this matchup. Again. It's blue, black, and green Tron that playing around Manathide against Jun. Look, I had to play around Manathide yesterday, so it's going to be on my mind all week. All week. Uh, I like this. It's good against the turn one Inquisition. Yep. He should take away Goblin Guide, but he might take Swift Spear. Because people are really scared of prowess. 
takes away skull crack. Okay, so his hand is packed with removal. I'll have to assume. Um, wow, actually, I think I need to fetch a second white source. Because I do have a white spell I want to cast. And I love mana tithe. White force spike, sign me up. People never play around it. Yeah. It's definitely a card that should see some play. Uh, the, 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 I think that the reason he doesn't see play is, okay, obviously it doesn't scale at all, like, you either catch your opponent on curve, or you lose. Don't lose, you don't lose, but, uh, it's not as effective then. Ooh, Eidolon. Um... This tells me my opponent has removal. Huh. I think that if my opponent had collective brutality, he would have played it. So I'm playing into collective brutality here. I'm shocking myself because of the path in hand I might want to please no push from opponent okay it makes sense that he had double removal though Uh, okay, can't play Liliana, that's huge, actually. Oh, and this Spire is just gonna discard that Liliana. That Liliana was a problem. Not gonna lie. Okay, we're not in a great position, but we we are in a decent position. Uh, what's my play? I attack. That has to be my play. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was talking about mana tithe. Um, if you had something like cycling, the card would be pretty good. Super playable, in my opinion. Guessing he attacks, oh, he attacks with both. That's actually good for us. Minzy probably plays Tarmogoyf here. Oh, Bolt. Okay. Sure. I really don't want to path the Spyro. Hello, House of Mana, how's it going? Uh, is this relevant here? Like this single point of damage, it is right now. It's not, I think. Well, it is. He is playing skews. Decided to say if I could not play your worst nightmare. Uh, <laughs> that's where I get you. I have a lot of nightmares. Vogels, ad nauseum, soul sisters. Ad nauseum. Yeah, that's probably one of the worst. It's probably one of the worst. 
I do okay. I do have ad nauseum uh complete. I can play ad nauseum one of these days. Seems really well positioned working something out with they're looking for a co op stream. Yeah, I'm I also wanna play ad nauseum, but I'm bad at it, so I'm not sure if it's something that I'll do. Okay, if I'm not playing anything. By the way, I also think it's really well positioned because. Oh, a land. It's not what I want to see. I got a sideboard guide, so it's easy peasy. Yeah, it makes sense. That sideboarding is the thing that I cannot do with. Um. Ad nauseum. I have no clue how you side with that deck. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to Inspiring Vantage in case of a Lily. I'm not playing Searing Blaze, but. Uh, this is something. Oh, this always kills it. Fine, you can kill my Swift Spear. I feel like I gotta do it now. So when it's not playing, do I hardcast this? No, let's suspend. <laughs> let's play around mana type. <sighs> no, playing around Luris, realistically. <laughs> I don't think he's on Luris, but... Do I do need to play? Is this game 2 or is this game 1? This is game 2. Did I win game 1? I did because of my amazing Liliana play. Oh, that point of damage is coming back to haunt me. Uh, this is removal for sure. I'm helping my opponent draw stuff. Bloodbraid Elf. Okay. That can be okay. Into Renan 6, that's good. It can't crack fetch lands. It's like the best. It's like the best hit. It can't attack here. Uh, Neither can we though. was a land, the sneaky bastard. Okay, we got there. I was playing around Weather the Storm. Uh, I had a feeling he might... Why the fuck would you slow roll? My opponents ask me why would I slow roll. I'm just telling them. He's upset, but he's a Jun player, so they're born upset. Okay, one and one. Not awful. I want to go even. I'd like a 4 1. But I guess it's not I'd like, it's I'll do my best to. Congratulations, we're going to the worst deck in water. <laughs> now, don't be mean. But 
probably. Of the quote unquote good decks. Oh, against Jund again. This is a famous Jund player. Uh, good hand against Jund on the play, especially. I wonder if I can get his list. Usually post his list or his latest list. I'm not being, I'm not trying to be mad. I just want to know if he's playing Weather the Storm. I can't find it. Um, okay, let's do this. It could come down to the race, so let's fetch a basic here. Let us fetch a basic. I'm really looking forward to Zendikar Part 3. So I'm really hyped for Roiling Vortex. I think that Roiling Vortex helps burn a lot. Okay, revealing thought sees. That's good. Oh, that's not good. That's not him on Jund. So this is removal. Cool. We got the We got the Removal Punisher in Eidolon. Oh he's on Shadow. Okay. Cycling Street Wraith, because he wants that shadow. Right, so he's taking the damage here, probably. Yeah. Um, it sucks that I have to shock myself. But I do, I really do. Yeah, it's shadow. And I tell my opponent. You're usually a junk guy. We fetched the basic off of that. Bold, very bold. Hmm, not sure what's coming. Angler, okay, that's definitely a good one. Angler is a good one. Huh, I kind of want to land. Swifty might actually be good here. Yeah. Swifty is actually good here. I'm not gonna attack. I'm gonna wait a turn. My Nexer needs to be really good. 
Inquisition, sure. Takes a skewer, understandable. So no battle rage is my takeaway. This goes face all day. Okay, play guide. And it's lethal, right? Uh, do I attack with everything? Is there a way I lose? Is he blocks one, he obviously blocks Swift Spear. And then any spell is still taking. Yeah, I think I need to attack with him. Okay, so he just concedes. Cool, 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 cool. Again, Incinerator's not. Oh, Incinerator, my boy. I love you so much, but... <laughs> You're so bad in this meta. Um, I probably want Skull Crack, right? Like this. Skullcrack has a lot of value because of the instant speed stuff. And Silifier is great in this matchup. Even TBR can save me because I need to trap myself to kill the return for damage. Oh, gotta go, my boss is here. Oh. That's. That sucks, I guess, but it's work, so not as bad. Good luck, thank you. Any two would kill me. I'm just chatting with my opponent a little bit. spot here. Winning game one against Shadow is really important. When this hand's very decent against you, ah, the land situation isn't great. Two pain lands, but I gotta keep with the double, double goblin guide. Uh, okay, this is a Inquisition. Yeah. Nope. Our hand's protected against Inquisition. Our hand is not protected against um, a possible... That's actually a good one. Uh, that's actually a very good one. I think... I'd rather give him perfect info than take that one extra damage, to be honest. Bad reveal goblin guide, bad goblin guide. Ooh, no second land. Ooh, that changes a lot. 
lot of things. Do I want to sandbag this? Yeah. Ooh, no, I, I, I revealed no land, so... I shouldn't have done this the way I did. I think I can assume he has no cling to dust in hand, or else he would have played it already. Okay, he kept an unfortunate one lander. So, we are kind of fine. Still no land. He has to. Well, it can mill me. I think it's ideal. Okay, but here's, here's how. So he doesn't want the angler. Of course he doesn't want the angler. He wants to draw land. A shock kills him. A fetch leaves him dead too, pretty much. against Shadow. Uh, I think game one was well played by me. Um, I'm trying to think. If there if there were if there's any interesting plays I did. Not sure, I think I just sequenced everything properly. The highlight of the day is, is, is I think it's always going to be that uh, play against Liliana on game one. I'm proud of that one, honestly. Yeah, let's go. Let's let's go for the four-one. I want to reach double digits in trophies as soon as possible. Uh, against Jund, okay, so here's what happened. I had... I knew he... I'm not sure if I knew he had Liliana, but it's Jund, so their turn 3 is probably Liliana. And I... ooh... Yeah, let's skip this. And I... okay. I had... I played Eidolon on 2 into a Liliana. And he was at 11. Sorry, he was at uh, 13. And he played Liliana and he went down to 11. And he... And he... He down ticked Liliana to kill my Eidolon and he passed the turn. I had four bolts in hand, enough for lethal, and I top decked the land. So what I did was I played two bolts, I suspended one and uh, it was a Rift Bolt and played a Lava Spike, and didn't play the land to discard it to Liliana to, assure, to ensure that I had lethal. Maybe it's, maybe it's obvious, but I'm still proud of it. I 
it was more exciting when it was happening. Like recounting it's like you obviously do that, you monkey. Uh, that's what I that's what I would tell my past self basically. Uh, okay, Adeline's a bad draw, but we're up against you. Wait, no, we're up against slivers. Okay, I don't think they have an, an incinerator answer. Now watch them have an incinerator answer. Like when I started playing incinerator, it felt great. Then after like a month, it felt like every deck had an answer for a for an early six six. And it makes sense, because both Drawn and uh, the other one, Amulet, and even Eldrazi Drawn. Basically, every big mana deck requires you to play big creature answers. So that's where Incinerator falls a little bit short, in my opinion. I think it's still worth it if blue and black aren't that popular. But... Okay, that's that's an easy. Let's get in with Goblin Guide. Is there is is there a one mana sliver that gives Death Touch? There's a one mana sliver that gives death touch. I wouldn't say I'm screwed, but Unsettled Mariner is annoying here because uh, the Incinerator trigger does get taxed. The Incinerator trigger does get taxed. So. It's not ideal. Here's the sudden realization that this duo of cards is pretty toxic. If I was in another lord, yeah, that makes sense. So my best, I don't want to say my best move because it's not really a move, it's a draw, that's not a good one, it's not a good one at all. Let's cycle one of these, I want a bolt, just a plain old bolt, come on give me a bolt or a lava spike, not a skewer. God damn it. Gosh dang it. Okay, so what's the deal here? I swing in, my opponent double blocks, he can sack them. Oh man, so close. 
so close. I think I still swing with Incinerator, right? Like, I trade two for one. Just one to hit. No, because he can sack. Well, if he sacks this, then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I swing with all. Swing with all. Well, you can just chump, chump these two and gain six and then this deals six and we're back to where we started, but then I can, yeah, let's swing with everything. Not here to make friends. He has no possible plays here. He needs to sack one, yeah. I'm killing the Dark Heart's liver. No, I'm not. Yeah, swinging, swinging with everything there was was best. I saw I saw three for three and forgot that incinerator requires a lot of math from opponent, math that he couldn't win basically. Oh, he's digging. He's digging. Alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for pushing me into that, that attack. There's a chance that I didn't take it. Uh, what do I want here? I definitely don't want Tidal on. Even if it's great with Incinerator, I think I want it. I think I want Skull Cracks for sure. I'd like some paths. Er, like some paths. I'm taking out two. Wait, what do I want to take out? Two Goblin Guides. It has awkward attacks and gets outscaled very quickly. But now watch me uh, have an opener with like two goblin guides. With like a really good opener. Uh, not a great opener. Do I win with this? And this is 13 plus killing an annoying sliver. Sure. <laughs> Two land spells. Can't really be too upset about it. Sliver Hive. Is that land expensive? Like in paper? I feel like it is. It have flying, that's fine. I'm not here to block. I do have to shock myself here. 
and let's spike face a slaver hive. I feel like it's expensive because it's probably one of those cards that people hoard. Yeah. It probably plays a lot of commander. No, Mariner. It's the worst card they could play. Hopefully they don't find a second one. Okay, it's not a second one. The hell is flanking. Blocking creature gets minus one, minus one. Okay, that's fine. So I'm taking three here. It is a bit painful. It is a bit, but I, but I got it. I gotta kill the mariner. Can't really raise him because if I draw land, I'm in a decent position. Like, Cloud Shredder is actually pretty annoying. I might have to kill it. Uh, how much is this? 10, 17. I have 17 damage in hand. Over 3 turns. Ugh. He plays a Lord. I'm taking a lot of damage. I do have 17. I'll hold. I'll hold in case my opponent is out of gas. Okay, that's... That's out of gas, but not out of gas enough. Something expensive that doesn't... Ooh, Chalice for one. Okie dokie, buddy. Okay, so let's assume that my opponent doesn't have anything interesting going on. Uh, or else he would have played that instead of Chalice for one. He has three mana. So let's assume he doesn't have anything too interesting. A bit too late. But also, no good blocks here. Um, Let's go for it. I'm basically banking on my opponent not top decking anything too relevant. Like a lord kills us because it's 8 damage. Uh, 4? Oh, is this another chalice? Ooh. Now that's problematic. Can we draw a Rift Bolt? <sighs> uh, no Rift Bolt. Am I gonna lose to Chalice? A day in a burn player's life, losing to Chalice. Uh, 
yeah. It's Rift Bolt or Bust. Skewer. Don't worry, Skewer. When I say Rift Bolt, I also mean you. Okay. And we were... Uh, not, not that screwed, but... I mean, we were, because we had one turn. We had no turns. It was now or never. Well, we got there. Um, if you, th you want to think, oh, what a lucky bastard. I hope you're talking about my opponent. Uh, seeing two chalices. Two chalice and one mariner against burn is definitely good. Definitely good. Uh, I think I made the right call in running. I think I interpreted well enough what my opponent had in hand, which was nothing. Or else he would have played something else other than Chalice there. Alright, so we're already even. You love to see it. And match one. Did I lose game one of match one because of myself? Like, I know it was the Yogin play that I miscalculated that Yogin exiles permanents and not lands. Uh, sorry, not creatures. But was there anything I could realistically do? Was there anything I could realistically do? Well... Maybe. Did I draw a land? Maybe it was my fault. Let's try to win this one. I'd love to go for one. hate this hand but I have to keep it I can't chip away this hand what do I want my opponent to be on the mirror oh that's definitely not what I want to see not playing helix so the mirror is bad for me, and it's the mirror because Arid Mesa and no Lurus probably means it's the mirror. Burn isn't playing Lurus at the moment, uh, which I which I disagree with. I've definitely had a couple of games won because of Lurus. They're online, you can watch them. Oh no, moments before disaster struck. This is not a good mirror hand. With the pain land, with no removal. Gut shot. It is mono red prowess. Mm. That changes things. That changes things. So why is he playing fetch lands? Uh, I need a land. That's not a land. I think it's obvious that I'm going to lose this one, sadly. Oh, it's... It, I, I, I'm an idiot. 
I'm an idiot. Of course it's is it. <laughs> Don't need blue fetches to play, is it? Uh, it probably saves this, which I don't really care. Like if he does save it, Rex and Man usually is it? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's obvious. Like Maze, uh, a fetch land plus gut shot clearly indicates is it, but I'm an idiot. Because when I saw Arid Mesa, my mind went to burn. Even though Mesa is the cheapest uh, fetch land, so obviously you should be running it. Uh, sure, opponent, do whatever you want. I don't have instant speeds here. And. From there, I thought no, but it's got it. Ugh. Thank you, fetch lands. But did all that and still lost the swift spear, which I'm fine with. Um, then my mind can only go from burn to mono red. My mind can't jump from. Boros to whatever the fuck this is, uh, is it? It's a big jump. Though I wonder, why does Monorad just play for gut shot? Is it not good enough as a spell? Oh, this sucks. Oh, this sucks a lot. This sucks a lot. I needed my second land sometime before turn 6, but I guess that's not happening. By the way, I stick by my decision. You have double creature, blind double creature, one lander on the draw. That's not a fetch. Yeah, you keep that every time. Well, I'm obviously dead opponent, so. He always has something like. Well. Sure. It's all the same, right? Now he can dart me. I'm at four, so I'm obviously dead. Alright, alright. But is it is probably the weakest prowess build against us? Which is mostly to protect the flyers. Yeah, yeah I, I understand why is it plays uh, Gutshot. I think it's. I think it should. My question is why isn't Mono Red playing Gutshot when Mono Red's thing is I'm the fastest prowess in the West? It's basically my question. So whenever I discuss prowess with anyone, they always tell me, no, but is it is the fast uh, sorry, but mono red is the fastest one. And both Gutshot and Mutagenic sound like mono red's choices to be even faster. Then again, I usually say that uh, building your deck to turn tree your opponent isn't good because any form of removal then makes your hand bad. Do they play Dragon's Claw? They do. So I I want to play Smash Smithereens. I want to cut Skullcrack. 
Oh. Well, I want to cut the incinerator package. Probably not, right? Sticking incinerator sounds pretty good. Skull crack to kill Dragon Claw. Here's the thing. Dragon Claw is smash to kill Dragon Claw. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you need to because here's when you bring in one hate card for one card when you can't reliably beat that card. And let's think about another example, which is Aether Vial. You don't bring in Smash against Aether Vial because you beat Aether Vial without Smash pretty comfortably. Like you just need to not get drowned in a big board state. But against Dragon's Claw, ooh, this is just a treat. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep this. Any bolt is incinerator. We have two cyborg cards. An opponent is molding into oblivion. Okay. Um I'll actually fetch a basic just in case I top deck an advantage. Let's, let's keep this seal of fire up and running. No creature on one. That says a lot. We did we did lose game one. Just pretty bad. <sighs> Is this a turn to burb? It is a turn to burb. Oh no, it's a dragon's claw, okay. Get the big boy on the board. My opponent... He might gust it. We can just replay it. Okay, so he's gonna double bolt my dude. And abrade it. Okay. Sure. And of course, I'm flooding. Like we're in a great position. If that worded foothills was a was a decent card. Thought you said on this card you were not playing Chandra. Yeah, but then I started the day, I opened up Goldfish, I saw a couple of recent results and then I thought I haven't played Incinerator in a while, let's try it out. And spoiler alert, it's been not great. The first three games uh, it was pretty much unplayable and then against Slivers it actually did some work, and now against Prowess it ate some bolts, 
Let's... Do I want to path it right now? Probably not, right? I want my opponent to go all in on that bird. Whoops, I should have fetched. Okay, now we path it on our turn. Yeah, you're welcome. You, you can ask anything. Um, I'll try to answer everything. Like, the chat isn't too spammy for me to miss stuff most of the time. Which matchups do you think are worse for burn? Ad nauseum? Bogles? And Soul Sisters. Those are the ones where you kind of assume you lose. Then, more meta matchups are Eldrazi Tron, if you're playing non-incinerator, which you should at this point in time. Amulet Titan, and weirdly enough, Rakdos Prowess. It's very hard to beat Rakdos Prowess on burn. You can't reliably control their board, they have some ways to gain life, they have some ways to strip you from resources, and then they land Lurus, and you either top deck removal, and are still behind, or you lose. Um, it really doesn't matter. So I think those three are the worst. Like realistically speaking, I don't think that Burn has like really good matchups. It has good matchups, but not anything as polar as I don't know. Soul Sisters against us. That's a really bad one. Do I wanna shuffle? No, right? I have a Swift Spear on the bottom. And I have now locked my opponent out of playing spells. Unless there are storm wings, which he can cast if he has a land. I think we can't lose here. Yep. Alrighty then, game three. And he's playing Gator guys, so I kind of don't want to play Incinerator. <laughs> So I am playing Lava Spike, simply. Because it's faster. Well, I might need the Reach, well... I might need the Reach from Boros Charm. If I'm cutting anything, I'm cutting... Well, no, because Seal of Fire is removal, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can't I can't really bring in an incinerator against a gust deck. Like as quickly as I got hyped on Oh that's a good hand. That's a good hand that I don't think I can keep. This hand auto scoops to Dragon's Claw. Well, I've got to bottom the Swift Spear, I think. Oh god, this is a bad hand too, but I'm on six. So, oh, he shocks himself. Alright, he plays a creature, alright. That's not a Soul Scar Mage. It's good to know. We need double white real quickly. It's not double white, nor it is quick.
Probably goes Metamorphose into Stormwing. Okay, Dragon's Claw, sure. I think I'm playing Guide here. Yep. Come on, I'm on the draw. How am I not drawing lands? Like, I'm so far away from having a decent, a decent anything. Just feels really bad. Give me an inspiring vantage. Like, I'm playing inspiring vantage, right? I'm playing four. I just need one. Ah, oh, double dragon claw. That's rough. It's very rough. So I think that's it. That's gonna be all, folks. No way I'm beating Double Dragon's Claw when I can find a second land. Like, my next draws should be... Land... Uh, they should be Land... Like, basically, double vantage and a smash to smithereens is something that I would consider good. He upgrades one of my guides, he gains two... Well, gains one because of Fiery Islet, but I'm also killing myself with my Islet. Oh, he casts a Soul Scar. So does he have a... Uh, a one mana spell, probably. We still no land. Like, there's no way I'm not attacking here. Feel revealing gust. It does have the poke. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna put you through this. We lose this game, like, every time, I think. Um, okay. I like to play Incinerator from time to time, just to check how... how it is. And... Basically, black being popular... Like popular enough, plus Aethergust being a card, plus uh, stuff like Tron, not caring about Incinerator at all, means that right now it isn't a card that you want to be playing. But I, I still think that Incinerator is good in certain metas, and I still think it's a gift from God. Uh, for metas where our deck was worse. And our deck was worse, our deck is worse in big mana metas. Like when Amulet and Etron are good and Ponza are good, this card is just insane. Right now, those options are fine. Like, Ponza is good, but not too good. And Amulet's making a little bit of a comeback, but it's still not. I think that as long as Aethergust is legal, uh, Amulet's always going to be a not popular deck. And Etron is just bad right now. <laughs> Etron is just bad, because Chalice on one is pretty poor. I mean, Given is still pretty good, bro. The Jund game was really well played. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not mad about going even. Uh, going even is my my baseline. Something that I'm always happy to do. What is this? Doesn't matter. Uh, 10 play points. Pretty good. Means we're at a point where we can 3-2 and still play another league with play points. Which is pretty cool. Uh, 
Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna be playing Incinerator for a while now. I don't think that it's good right now. This is the list that I'm gonna be playing. It's the list that I've been playing for a while now, which I think it's the best burn list. Uh, of course, I'm that guy that plays 61 cards, but you, you can ignore that and just play this. I think that Skullcrack is better than Searing Blaze. I actually think that Searing Blaze is so mediocre right now that you want to be playing 4 Path and 4 Core in the side rather than 2 Searing Blaze like I was. And my changes when Roiling Vortex gets released. Uh, let's. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna use Sulfur Sulfuric Vortex as, as what I'm gonna do. Like, ignore the numbers up top because I'm just not removing the cards from here. This is gonna be a Rolling Vortex. I'm gonna play two in the side and one in the main. And yeah, I'm gonna probably... Like, this is the list I'll play because of 61, but if you want to go to 60, I I'd cut a skull crack. It's reasonable to get a, either a skull crack or a lightning elix, basically. And this is the list I'll be playing. I think that Rolling Vortex is really good, and I think it's gonna... It's gonna make our life easier against some stuff. Namely, Prowess, where you can just play the control role, and then point a couple of helix at face, play vortex, and don't let him pl gain any life with cling to dust. I think that against Jund is gonna be really good, because sure they have answers in Assassin's Trophy, but they're not great answers. I think it's gonna be really good against a control, because they need to answer it sometime or else they're never going to gain any life, and while they're trying to answer it, you open windows to kill them with your other burn spells. So I think it's going to be a really good card for us. And this is the list I'll be playing, probably. Again, if you want to um, play 60, because you don't trust my math, which is understandable, like, uh, going over 60 might be wrong. It's been feeling great, but... If you have proof, send it to me. Uh, probably cut a skull crack because of the anti-life gain on Vortex. But cutting an cutting a helix is probably fine too. Those those will be my changes basically. Until then, this is the list. It's on screen. I'll be playing it tomorrow and probably every day until Zendikar. Um, I'd be down to playing some other stuff like Browse. Uh, not Blue-Red because I don't own a couple of things. Do you think you'll get Chain Lightning in Modern Horizons 2? Okay, as a non-burn player, as a person that enjoys Modern, I don't think we will. And it's not because of Red decks. Which would be a fair argument, because red decks are already really strong, and if you give them uh, another bolt instead of burst lightning or other shocks that people are playing, I think the deck gets even better. But I think that the real reason is that lightning bolt is a great control card. And if you suddenly have access to 8 lightning bolts, then pretty much all aggro stops being relevant. Like, can you imagine playing Prowess against blue-red control, and they just have 8 bolts, plus Snapcaster in Mystic Sanctuary? Like, sure, you can copy it if they bolt one of your creatures, but is it really worth it? Do you really want to be facing 8 bolts against control? I think that's the reason why I don't want uh, Chain Lightning in the format. 
Um, that's basically it. Like, maybe I'd like to have it here. I'd love to get, like, Rift Bolt. Yeah. I feel you. Like, it sucks that I have to say that a card would be bad because it would be good for us, but even better for opponents. But I do, yeah, but I do think that it's good enough in control that uh, it would basically kill aggro as an archetype. That's my answer. I'd, I'd obviously play for like I'd cut probably Rift Bolt. Skewer is awkward sometimes, but Rift Bolt is awkward a lot of times. So I'd probably cut Rift Bolt, or even Lightning Gilix. Like, yeah, I might even cut Lightning Gilix uh, to lower the curve. But either way, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I re I reached 50 followers on Twitch, which is pretty amazing. For me, at least. Uh, considering I had zero, like, uh, zero following before starting the streams. And I'll try to... I'll try to... Um, uh, w w what does this mean? This means that I'm now... A, I'm, I can now apply to be a Twitch affiliate, I think, which means that I can get subs. I'll try to get something uh, worth for subs. Uh, probably the typical sideboard guide, like my... that's relevant to my list. I think that's, so that's something that I'll try to do. But more on that tomorrow, probably. Either way, thank you for watching today and see you next time. Do I want to raid someone? Who's online right now? Um, well, let's raid Magus. He's playing Charles Bell. Ugh, I can't even say it. Charl Belcher? Is that how you say it? I don't even know what that deck is.